Well, delighted as always to be joined by Mr. Joe Cordina. Joe, my question has been the same to all the fighters that we've caught up with today. A bit different for you being at home because things have changed. Yeah. Talk to us about what you've been up to and uh, how's life? Um, yeah, it's been great. Obviously, it's not so great with me being injured, but at the same time, I've managed to get certain things done back at home. I've moved house. Uh, yeah, getting that all sorted and then eventually got married in December. So, yeah, I'm a married man now. Yeah, so it's been it's been great. I saw a, a great post on your Facebook that you did the other day where it was like trying to pick a winner of what the highlight of 2022 year uh, 22 was. Obviously, winning the world title and, and marrying your fiance Lauren. Not a bad year for you to look back on. And they're both winners. Yeah, to be honest, uh, obviously, the main thing for me is I've been with her 15 years. That was my highlight, really. But, uh, but at the same time, it's a lifelong dream come true also with me winning a world title. Uh, but on it, not only that, the last couple of years have been, I've been blessed. I have my boy, which I, I pray to God for. Uh, I got him. We moved house. We're all settled in now. Uh, got married and won a world title. So, yeah, it's been the last like year or two, it's been like, I've been proper blessed. I say behind every great man is an even greater woman. I just wonder for you, Joe, that like you say you've been with, with Lauren. We know Lauren, she's so lovely and a great mother to your, your family as well, especially when you're, when you're away. How important is it for you that you have someone like Lauren in your corner, away from the cameras? What, is, what does she do for you, Joe? Oh, yeah, listen, if, if I didn't have it, I'll be honest with you, I'd be, I'd be naffed. She does everything for me uh, when I'm home. She, she knows, since I started boxing, I, I, when I told her, but this is before we had kids, I said, you get in, in, in between boxing, I said, you're gone. But obviously, she, I, I don't want to disrespect and say she knew her role back then, but we were a bit younger. No, she, she, she know what it takes to get, for me to get to where I am. And the life she's got now is because she allowed me to pursue and crack on with what I needed to do. So she understands, but everything, without her doing what she does behind the scenes, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So. She, she looks after my kids. Um, she's a great mother, great wife now. Um, and yeah, without her, it, I wouldn't I'd be able to do what I do. She was the proudest woman in the world, wasn't she? And certainly the proudest woman in that arena when you, when you won that world title. Yeah, she was. She was, yeah, she was unbelievable. Like, she, I, as soon as I looked out the ring, she was there, she was crying, and then whenever she gave me a hug, she, I told you, you've done it. And we spoke about it. I've told her from start, everything I've set out to do, and I've told her what I, was, I said to what I was going to do, I've done. She was like, you should, you fucking said it, you've done it, you've done it. And I was like, I oh, know, I said, I told you. And she was like, ah, oh. but anyway, the next day we, um, we get home. Um, she went, Joe, uh, I thought I was going to have a lay-in. That wasn't the case. She was like, listen, you need to go to the shop or you got to get up with a boy and the girls because I need to go to the shop. I said, well, I'll go to the shop then. I thought, can't be asked looking after these for, for, uh, for an hour. So I've gone to the shop, taking photos in the shop and everything, everyone's wants photos and stuff. So, I come back from the shop, gets there, and she goes, you are? He goes, I said, what do you want to do with him? She went, put him in a bin. Do you want to take the rubbish out? I went, wow. I said, I'm a fucking world champion. She went, I don't go, fuck, you're number one in the world. You ain't the number one in the house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she, she, she keeps me grounded, which is which is good. And uh, yeah, she was very, very proud. Oh, brilliant. I love that. When you, uh, you think back to that special night in June, I, I spoke to Lee Wood about this, and he was like, look, I've got fed up of seeing the knockout played over and over again. Have you got fed up of seeing yours yet? Yeah, I have to be honest. Like, at least three, four times a day, I, if someone tags me in it. But obviously, you've got to, you've got to remember this. Yeah, we get fed up of seeing it because it's us. But people that ain't getting tagged in it every single day and they might pop up once in a blue moon from and they see it, they like, yeah, so. And they're loving it. But when if we took ourselves out of the equation of and that wasn't us, we'd be like, that is unbelievable. Same as Lee Wood's um, scenario, same as mine. We just got to go along with it, appreciate it. Um, because once we're done, the way we've won world, like for myself, and not so much Lee because he was defended, but for myself, the way I won a world title in that fashion, that will live on forever. And for me, but it is, it's not just for me, it's fact. No one have ever from Britain won a world title the way I've won a world title. 
So that will go down as in history as one of the best knockouts to win a world title, not just in Wales but in Britain. And I just gotta, I just gotta go go with it. And every time it gets posted, repost it, and go along with it. The way that the year planned out for you, obviously after that night wasn't in the script. But just to see you, I saw you punching actually for quite a while, just with one hand. You look dangerous enough just with a one hand, but. You must have had itchy knuckles for a while to be back punching with the two hands now. How does the hand feel and how do you feel to be doing that? Yeah, um, I did have itchy knuckles for a while. Um, and it was it was like that scenario of me in lockdown and getting the the hand operated on the first time with my metacarpal. Um, this is a totally different scenario and it was, yeah, it was it was a bit of a bittersweet moment of me winning a world title now getting back into, into um, a camp getting ready for my first defence, breaking my metatarsal. It was just, you couldn't write it. It was a bittersweet moment. Yeah, I won a world title and then shortly after breaking my hand and then get stripped of a title, so. But I've been in the gym. I, after about two, three weeks, I was in my feelings. Well, two, three weeks, I was in my feelings. And after that, I sort of made peace with it. Um, and like I said previously, I've been blessed the last couple of years. Um, my missus, well, my wife now, she reminded me, she was like, listen, you've been blessed. You've got to, you're thankful when everything's going your way. When you're not going your way, you still got to be thankful. So I sort of looked at it that way, yeah. Obviously in life, one door closes and then one opens. And in this situation, yeah, I got stripped. But I got my shot straight back for, for my title again. And I'm going into it as a challenger, but in my head, I'm a champion. I haven't lost. I'm going, I haven't, I haven't lost a title in a fight, so I've lost it. it bad circumstances me breaking my hand so I still got that champion mentality but also I'm always hungry I'm all I always train like I'm an underdog and um, a challenger so yeah it's uh yeah going to it was a bit of a bittersweet moment and I had them itchy knuckles and I was always training I was keeping myself fit and then it was leading up to Christmas and I, I took a little break because I don't want to get stale I don't want to come into camp and burn out straight away so I had a week or two off and then doing a run here and there bit of training here and there and now I've come back I've still got about 14 weeks from the date I've been told so um, I've come back early but I want to get ahead of the game so just ease my way slowly back in We well, you were there in Abu Dhabi to watch obviously Rakimov against Alpha Barrett was that a strange experience for you knowing that they were fighting for the belt like you say that he hadn't lost yeah, it was. When when I was when I was watching them like in the uh, open workout and stuff like that, I had to be there because it was I was that's what I was over there for to uh, to witness all that and be a part of that. But I wanted to pick up the nearest thing to me and just go and whack the two of them. But listen, uh, it is what it is. It's a part of boxing and it happens. Well, my situation it happens it happens not just to me and a couple of people it happens a lot of uh, to a lot of people so um i don't think it happens there's a uh, world title against strips but injuries constant but yeah listen uh i enjoyed the fight Zelfa boxed very well um and i thought he was winning a fight comfortably yeah he was the rack and mob was starting to come back into it but i think if he would have had a round or two off and um, and then he would have finished the, 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 the fight strong as alpha, but unfortunately he got his ear perforated and his balance went, so it sort of, yes, the tides um, drifted then. So, uh, yeah, but listen, I like Zelfa, a good guy. I don't know uh, Rakimov, and I'll, keep, I'll rather keep it that way because the next time I see him, he'll be in the ring, and I want to punch his head in, so, uh, yeah. I know you've been around this sport for most of your life. You're a student of the game and a boxing fan, first and foremost, as well. What did you see when you watched Rakim Wobben and what sort of challenge, I guess, are you prepared to be met with? Yeah, he's tough. He's tough, he's strong. But technically, he's not as good as me. Um, I'm just being, speaking fact. I'm not trying to put him down and big myself up. It's just, that's just fact. Technically, he's not as good as me. He's physical, he's strong, and that's where his, most of his stoppages come from because he's relentless and he comes forward and he's putting a pressure on. But like I've said previously, listen, with Gavin Gwynn, Gavin Gwynn's no Rakimov, but at the same time, their hope was them to grind me down because that's what his game is, grind me down. And that's his only hope, is trying to grind me down and get to me. 
but you've got to be a little bit more than just tough, strong and, and physical to beat me. And he haven't got that little bit more that he needs. Looking at how you beat Agawa, I think it's fair to say that not a lot of people saw you winning as early as you did in that fashion. In terms of the racquetball fight, like you talked about there, about his toughness and his strength, is there nothing that will surprise you, though, about how you might win this fight? Oh, listen, I, listen I'm not going to say what I think is going to happen. It could totally stand me on my head and just flip the script, but um, I think I'll win and I'll win comfortably. Um, I've seen Zalfa hurt him. I've seen a Fusilli hurt him to the body. Um, so... I know he can be hurt. Now I'm I'm a good body puncher and clearly I can I punch with a backhand a little bit and I can box and that's my bread and butter. I can box and people coming forward like him. That's I love that. But if if I can box twelve rounds and get a comfortable points decision, I'm happy to do that because that's like I said that's my bread and butter. But if the stoppage is there, I'll never ever look for it. But if it's there, I'll take it. Um, like I did with with an Ogawa. Now that was a shot that me and Tony been practicing and working on for hours and hours in the gym. I know people might say I'm full of shit, but and genuinely, if you ask Tony and you play back the the CCTV if we got in the, in the gym, you'll see we'd be working on it. It was two shots: fake to the body, come up with a left hook, or fake to the body, right hand to the head. So, yeah, we've been working on a few things already um, this last couple of days since I've been back, and we've been speaking on the phone anyway, and. We know how we fight and certain things that's going to work. And I've been working back home anyway. I've got a good boxing brain. I've been working back home with my mate Sarah. Um, was my best mate, but he's unbelievable on the pads. And he reads a good fight game as also. Um, and we've been working on certain things back home. But now I'm back here. Now we can put a game plan together. You said you were very happy to not only get your shot back straight away to, to win your belt back, but you're also, it looks like you're going to have it back in Cardiff. Another special night for everyone to look forward to. Yeah, of course. Obviously, yeah, I'd want it to be in Cardiff. I don't want to go to Tajikistan and I don't want to go to America, really, because it just don't make sense. The only place it makes sense is in the UK and Wales, because I don't think he sells tickets, but I can sell tickets. Um, yeah, I, I just, to be honest, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's a, uh, it's. We we only had like three three and a half weeks to sell the last show. We got we got plenty of time now. And if we put a ten, fifteen, twenty thousand seated in there, I reckon we'd fill it. In terms of yourself, Joe, obviously the the full focus is on Shavkat Rakimov, but a few other names who have been flowing around, particularly on social media. Shakur Stevenson. Uh, a bit of back and forth. What's the what's the story with that? Yeah, we had a little bit of back and forth shortly after the fight. Um and we sort of said like listen He'll do with his mandatory, I'll do with mine, and we'll get a fight out. But obviously, he moved up a weight. He didn't make the weight, vacated his belts, moved up. But he called me out, and like that's like hitting a nerve with me. Like, you've called me out, and then you've gone, you've chipped to a different weight. And listen, there's no fault of his own. Um, but he just outgrown the weight. But at the same time, you've called me out, and we're going to have to fight down the line. Um, and he shortly after as well, that one, he's, he done a talks, but. Um, interview um, and it was like a time like not many people seen it but my mates uh, Peachy he, he was on the way to Tesco or something and he was videoing it he videoed it and sent it to me it was like 12 o'clock at night and like I said not many people seen it but he's basically saying that he'd um, he'd be willing to come to the UK and the only person he'd fight is me um, and it's a big fight for him and for me and he can still make 133 but that's perfect I'll make 133 I'll go one three five if you want to. It doesn't matter to me, but uh, yeah. But first and foremost, I got to get my title back because well, as world title, it's, it's pointless. He's listen. I'm I'm a boxing fan first and foremost, and he's one of the best fighters on the planet. Um, but at the same time, I want to challenge myself. I want to fight the best. I want to be in big fights, and not only is he one of the best fighters, and I want to test myself against him. He called me out, so I got to punch him. I got to punch him in the feet. I know you're also uh, always a big believer, Joe, perhaps from your faith, but you're a big believer of speaking things into existence and manifesting things. I saw you downstairs there, you're on Twitter, you're writing two-time 
Is that all the visualisation is for you? Is that all you see happening this year? And in the words of Anthony Joshua, will it be so nice that I suppose you had to do it twice? Yeah. Like, for me, I've always, anything I've set out to do, I've always said it and said it and said it. And like, before I won a world title, I had the IBF, my whole camp, on the front screen. And I'd woke up and seen it every day. And two times, like I just told you downstairs, every tweet, I will quote the tweet two times. I don't need to say no more, just two times. And that's what I'll do every tweet that I get tagged in with, with a video or me fighting. That's all I'll do. Now, that's me speaking speaking into existence. And I'm manifesting. I've been manifesting it for, for a while now. And um, I need my title back. I need my title back. So I need to be big fights. I need to set my family up. I, I need to put myself down in history. So that's what I need to do. Joe Cordina, top man, always great to catch up and thanks for your time.